High year 12s, I'm just going to go through um, invariant points and lines of invariant points and invariant lines. I'm going to do a few examples um, of finding those for matrix transformations in 2D. Um, OK, so let's just consider if we've got this matrix here. Remember, this represents a reflection in the line y equals x. So we'll just see y in a second. So I've drawn a unit square there. OK, and we know that um, the point represented by the position vector, sorry, 1, 0, would be transformed to 0, 1. So 1, 0 will come over here to 0, 1. So this would be a dashed. OK, and the point 0, 1, which is my point B here, is being transformed to 1, 0, which is over here. So A and B have swapped places, OK? And so it's a reflection in the line Y equals X. Um, so for this, we can see that always the point 0, 0, in this particular case, the point 1, 1, are invariant, OK? So because if we reflect anything that's already on the line, it's going to stay where it is. So we call it an invariant point. And in fact, 0, 0 is always invariant for any um, 2 by 2 linear transformation. OK, because if we've got any transformation matrix and we multiply it by the um, position vector 0, 0, we will always get out 0, 0 again. So it doesn't matter what linear transformation we've got, 0, 0 is always an invariant point. And for some tr matrix transformations, we will also have other invariant points. And it turns out that will always lie on a line going through the origin. OK, so let's try a couple of examples. So this one here, we're going to do a negative one first. Um, so it shows that the transformation represented by this matrix has no invariant points other than the origin. OK, so for any invariant points, we should discover that when we multiply, pre-multiply by our transformation matrix, OK, a point x, y will end up back on the point x, y. So it hasn't moved anywhere. So let's carry out that uh, multiplication. So we've got negative 4x plus y will equal x and 3x minus 2y will equal y. OK, so we want to think about how we would solve this simultaneously. So let's just rearrange the equations and get y in terms of x for both of them. So this one, we're going to get uh, keep the y on the left and add 4x, so we'll get y is 5x. Whereas this one here, we're going to get, if we add the 2y, we get 3y on that side. And we'd have 3x on this side, which gives us y equals x. So these two equations have to both be true at the same time. And the only solution to that, so for example, we could substitute this one into that one. OK, and that would give us that x has to be 0. And we know that y equals x. So the only solution to... Um, this matrix equation is when x and y are both zero. So that tells us that the origin okay, is the only invariant point. OK. All right, then. So let's have a go at another question. So this one is going to cover all the bases and is probably <coughs> the harder sort is trying to find general invariant lines. OK, so a line of invariant points is a line where every point stays where it is. OK, it transforms back to itself. But an invariant line is a set of um, is a line that transforms onto itself. But the points within it don't have to stay still. Um, an example of this is if we go back to our reflection from before. So we know that this is a line of invariant points. Every point on y equals x stays where it is. 
However, if we look at any line perpendicular to that, so we have this line here, okay, or we could have y equals minus x, okay, then any point on this perpendicular line, when you reflect it in y equals x, it's like the line flips over, okay, and so it lands back on itself, but the points may have, apart from 0, 0, will have transformed. So, for example, if this is y is minus x, okay, and so this was perhaps, um, it's not to scale, obviously, uh, 3 minus 3, that would transform to minus 3, 3. So it, it has moved, but the line has landed on top of the line. So we call it an invariant line, but those are not invariant points. Okay, so for this example, we're going to find both sorts. Okay, let's start with the invariant points and we do the same process as we did earlier. Okay, so. Okay, so that means we know that 2, 1, 2, 3 multiplied by x, y has to give us x, y. Okay, so any point transforms to itself. So we multiply out that um, matrix. So we get 2x plus y is x, and 2x plus 3y is y. And then if we rearrange um, these, I'm going to make y the subject. You could make them equal 0, whatever you want to do to solve simultaneously. So I'm going to subtract 2x. Okay, and then if we look at this one here, if we subtract the y, we get 2y, okay, and we subtract 2x from both sides, and we can see that this is equivalent to y equals x. So that means that whenever y is equal to negative x, we have found an invariant point. So every point on the line, y equals negative x, is an invariant point. So we say this as a line of invariant points. OK, so now we're going to think about finding the invariant lines of this matrix transformation. OK, right. So that means that if we start with y equals mx plus c, we should end up with some points also on the line y equals mx plus c, okay? Right, so let's, um, if we begin with our matrix transformation, and we start off with a point on the line y equals mx plus c, if the x coordinate is x, then the y coordinate must be mx plus c, and that will give us some new points. And these points must also satisfy v is equal to mu plus c, okay, for the same m and the same c. So let's carry out that um, multiplication. So we get 2x plus mx plus c gives us our u, and 2x plus 3 lots of mx plus c is equal to our v, and then we're going to substitute it into that equation. So we've got our v, which is 2x plus 3mx plus 3c, is equal to m times our u plus c. Okay, so we're just going to make this a lot nicer. And we're actually going to rearrange it to equal zero as well. Okay, so first of all, expanding the brackets. Okay, and then we're going to subtract all of these terms from both sides, so we get zero on the left. So we've got, so 2mx take away 3mx will be minus mx. Then we've got an m squared x. And then we've got an mc, and then we've got c, take away 3c, and we've also got minus 2x. So I'm going to gather together all of the coefficients of x, 
OK, so I'm taking x out as a factor and looking for everything that's multiplying by x. So I can see I have got an m squared x, a minus mx, and a minus 2x. So m squared minus m minus 2. OK, and then what's left? We've got mc minus 2c. So I could factorise that and get c m minus 2. OK. Now, because all of this equals zero, that means that this term has to equal zero and this term has to equal zero. Now, x is a variable, so it doesn't have to equal zero. It does once, but it doesn't have to. Um, so this um, coefficient of x, that has to equal zero um, if we're going to get a solution to this equation. So we've got m squared minus m minus 2 is zero. We can factorise that. And we can therefore solve it. OK, now that has to be true. But also at the same time, this term has to be true, has to equal zero. So we've got C times N minus two is zero. So that tells us that C is zero or M is two. OK, so we see that both of these M's match. Well, that's fantastic. So if M equals two, then here, this bit will be zero and this bit will be zero. OK, then we have a solution. So and then we have found an invariant line. So if we remember our original equation that we're looking at, y equals mx plus c, this means that we can have any c OK, as long as the gradient is 2. OK, and so any graph with gradient 2 will map onto itself under the transformation matrix um, 2, 1, 2, 3. OK, right, let's consider the other option. So if instead m equals negative 1, then we're happy with this bit because um, this bit will be zero, but here that won't be zero, so we'd require C to be zero. Okay, and so then we have another solution. So that means there is an invariant line. And that line is Y is, so we'd have minus X, plus zero. OK, so we have two invariant forms of invariant lines. We have an infinite set of invariant lines of this form, depending on what C is. And we have another invariant line. Now, you might recognise that because when we did our line of invariant points, we got y equals minus x. So any line of invariant points is also an invariant line. But Invariant lines are not necessarily lines of invariant points.